trying to cannulate a paediatric patient is no easy task but you can set yourself up for the best chance of success by making sure you position the patient well. And although this sounds simple, getting a good position really does make all the difference. How you position the patient is going to depend on a number of things. So it'll depend on the age of the child, it's gonna depend on what setup you have in the environment you're cannulating in, and it's going to depend on getting cooperation from the parents. Here's how I decide which positions I choose for my patient in order to optimize my success at getting my cannula in first time. With babies, I'm going to put their cannula in while the baby's lying on the bed. I never do a cannula on a baby while the parent is holding them in their arms. You're just not gonna get a good position, you're not gonna get stability. Now, I do sometimes do a heel prick in that position, but I'll never do a cannula. So the baby should be lying on the bed, and the reason that this is good is that the parent can still be near the baby, so they can pat the baby, they can comfort them. You can get good view of the parts you need of the baby, and you can have someone else who can hold the baby's leg or hold the arms out the way or whatever you need so that everyone can get good access to the baby and the parent can still be nearby. You should remember that babies do move about a lot during the procedure, so even the limbs that you are not using for cannulation, you may want someone to be looking after them to make sure that they don't get in the way of you completing the procedure. If I was putting a cannula on a baby's hand, I tend to use a C shape, so I put my index finger and my thumb into a c-shape and I hold that around the baby's hand. This helps to give good stability so that I can get a good view of the vein and also hold the arm steady. With toddlers, I'm usually going to position them so that they are sitting in the parent's lap. Toddlers are not going to want you to be cannulating them and they're going to be difficult to keep still. Having the parent on board and also having the parent involved in cuddling and holding the child during the procedure really helps to stabilize the toddler to get a good position so that you can get the cannula in. My favorite way to do this is to have the toddler facing tummy to tummy to the parent and for the toddler's legs to be straddling the parent. That allows the parent to put their arms around the child's back and hold them steady. What you can do then is you put the arm or leg that you want to cannulate to the side where you are. So if it's an arm, it will go under the parent's arm. It allows you to be able to see the part of the body that you're going to cannulate, but at the same time, the parent and the child can look over in another direction. This is how you get good distraction because the child and the parent don't need to be looking at what you're doing at all and they can focus on whatever distraction techniques you've got. If you've got a play therapist, this is a great time to get them. Our play therapists are absolutely wonderful and really they make the procedure so much easier. They can get out the toys that the child likes, the iPad, a book or whatever, and they can talk to the child along with the parent while you're doing the procedure. This makes all the difference. If you can do this, it's the optimum position you're going to get for cannulating a toddler. For older children, you could also try them sitting on the parent's lap, but it's probable when they get big enough or old enough that it's gonna be practically difficult to do that, but also that you don't need to, and it's gonna be a lot easier just to have them lying on the bed. Now, depending on the child, they may want to look at you doing the procedure or they may want to look away. It's good practice and it's what I normally do to ask, because they, they know what's gonna happen. So you say, do you, do you want to look or do you think you'll be better not to look? It's okay for you to look, but you're gonna have to keep still. So if they want to look, don't try and block their view. That's totally fine, because otherwise they're gonna be wrestling to, to kind of get their bend their neck around to have a look, and it's just gonna make it a lot more difficult. If they feel they want to look, that's fine. I'm at the place where we're gonna do the cannula, which is likely to be in their arm, and I'm gonna have someone else who's holding their arm steady. Now, if they don't want to look or you don't think they should look, that person can position themselves so that they're in between the patient and you and essentially blocking the patient's view. Often that's not necessary in older children. You're just holding, having someone to hold their arm just in case they aren't able to keep still at that moment or they need a bit of extra support. And again, you still use distraction techniques if they don't want to look. So you can talk to them during the procedure, but also the parent can be on the other side of the bed chatting to them while you get on with the procedure. The key for all of these is to ensure you get the child comfortable so that the child is as comfortable as they could be, to ensure that you are able to stabilize the part of the body that you need to be able to cannulate. So you'll have someone else on hand to hold 
to ensure that you've got a good view of the place you want to cannulate so that it's not buried under another body part and you actually have a clear view and to allow whatever distraction techniques or if you've got a play therapist or the parent to help the child look in another direction while you're getting on with the procedure. I use these positions depending on the age of the patient and they are really the best positions to optimise my chances of success because if you get a good position you're much more likely to get your cannulite in the first time.